Okay, this is our Articap 400 that we're going to be uh, taking apart to redo the piston sleeve, the cylinder sleeve on it. Uh, one thing we did I already add to this, which is a good idea, is inside here you see the uh, fuel filter. We've added a, an additional fuel filter to it. And uh, we don't have one on this one, but if you're in an area where there's high crime and Julie of your four wheeler tied up outside, uh, you can always add an extra shutoff valve into your fuel line right here. And uh, that would help with uh, theft. If someone tries to steal it, they're going to have to push it away or load it on a truck and not be able to drive it off on you. So that's always an idea. You just put it somewhere where everyone else wouldn't see it. And all you gotta do is uh, cut the line and splice one in. Um, our fuel pump is actually off an Articat snowmobile. We gotta use one and put it on there and it works just fine. Everything else we'll be showing you uh, step by step as we go through it. But our uh, next step for this project is gonna be to go ahead and take all the uh, plastic off the outside so that we can actually get to the engine. So the next stage will show you have all the plastic off. Okay, so we're taking off the rear rack and I just want to show you guys a little something. Uh, I like to take a Ziploc baggie, label it with the information that it's on the, like this one here says it's for the rear rack and all your nuts and bolts can go in there. And uh, you can even take a piece of tape and just tape it onto the rear rack. And now, uh, when you take that rack off, all your nuts and bolts are all there together, so when you go to put it back together, you'll know where to find them. So, that's just one of our steps so far, and we're going to keep going. So, in the next section, we took off all of our fender nuts and bolts. You'll find that there's three on the inside, and on this side, there's three that are hard to get to because they're squeezed between the gas tank and the fender protecting the rear of your leg on the right side. The key to getting to that piece is you need a tool that comes from the company with your tool set. Uh, it's just a star shaped wrench with a 90 degree angle. It'll fit back in there perfect to be able to get to that star and hold it still while you unscrew it. And then once you have that undone, you're just going to roll up your system. And we're going to disconnect our light from the rear. Once that's disconnected, you're all set to take the parts off. And we'll be moving on to the next stage of this assembly. Alright, now we've got the front fender off. And our next step is going to be to take the side steps off to give us more access to the engine. Uh, we'll also be taking off the air filter system. When you take apart the front fender, You'll see there's this little spring right here that's zip tied on there. That spring goes inside the bottom of the handle down here. And what happens is when you take it apart, you don't recognize it. But the handle moves at some point, it falls out. And then you find it a week later and wonder where, what that spring's to and can't figure it out. Well, that's where your little spring goes to. Uh, you'll, you can see once you've got those couple of fenders off, and it didn't take long at all, took about 45 minutes to take it all apart and get it down to this point here. Uh, you can do a lot of work on that four wheeler. If you need to run any wires, uh, if you want to put new headlight systems in or horns, now's the time to do it. This is a picture of the four wheeler with the sides taken off. And the air box is next. So we went ahead and took the air system off of it and opened it up. You'll notice that uh, I took the hoses off and I made sure to put a piece of cloth in there to cover it up. That's to make sure you don't drop any dirt or debris inside there while you're doing any work. You don't want any inside the carburetor. We also had an air intake hose down here uh, that we put a little piece of cloth in too to make sure the same thing. We don't want any dirt from the four-wheeler getting down in there. As you can see, the next step we did is we went ahead and took the muffler off, got it out of the way. We also disconnected the shift lever. 
off of the engine. And again, like before, we added a piece of cloth to the exhaust port to make sure no debris falls inside of it. So the next stage in this operation was we we pulled back our two airline hoses. One's the air hose to the fuel tank. The other one goes to the carburetor here, and we're just getting them out of the way. Next up was we cut the line and unbolted our relay, and we're going to move that stuff out of the way so that you can get into where we need to. The next thing you'll notice is that if you look here, you can see that shiny area where our throttle cable has been rubbing. So before we put it back together, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we uh, cover that up and put some new covering over that throttle cable. The next step I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to disconnect that throttle cable and get it out of the way. We still have the carburetor hooked up and I haven't taken that apart yet. And the rest of the engine is still in place. The next step that we made was we went ahead and we took out the motor mount bracket that was here, came to here, and as you can see we did disconnect the fuel line cable and set it up out of the way over here. It just has to be out of the way for us. Now, you've taken off pretty much all the work on this bike. The rest of the small pieces to be done wouldn't be a whole lot and you can do. Now, if you decide at this point that you're in over your head, don't worry. You can go ahead and take the four-wheeler to your local dealership as it is and just tell them what work you need to be done. What you've already done is you've taken all the body parts off and out of the way and made it easy work on this engine and that will save you money on labor. Well, I got the four-wheeler apart. I'm going to go ahead and I, as you can see, I already took them out. I disconnected our little plastic connectors on either side. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. And it just pulls out once you disconnect them. I'm going to end up taking apart my front here. I'm going to check the winch, make sure it's in good shape. And uh, I found a bolt down here. It looks like somebody stripped out at some point, so I'm going to go ahead and take that out and retap it while I have a part. And if you look down inside the screen, you can see there's a buildup of dirt in, on the inside there. So I'm going to go as far as going down to that section there and cleaning that all out so that it will cool the engine off better. Alright, as you can see now, we've taken the top cover off. And the next stage here is going to be taking our timing chain off, and that's a multiple process step there. And you see down here we got our timing chain and a tensioner there. And so we're making all our adjustments that we need to. And taking that out next. I went ahead and removed our screw from our timing hole. I went ahead and I set it on top dead center right there. And that will get us ready for our next movement. But I wanted the little bit to be able to see where you could view that top dead center. Alright, well I got my bolts out, remove my system. Now I was just noting on here, you can see my timing lines right there. They run straight across on mine and the B's on the upside. You want to take note of that when you take this next part of off just so you know what where it's at to reference it when putting it back in. You can see we went ahead and we got the top half off. Now we're going to take the bottom half off. Uh, you can see down here on the side there's two bolts there. We've got to undo and throw it off. And I've 
lay the towel down there, which I'm going to use to put the piston on when the piston comes out so it doesn't get all scratched up off the metal around it. And you can see also that I got my chain with a, a bolt in it so I don't lose that. Alright, there we are. We've got the final shelf out. And I've got the chain wrapped up. And the piston wrapped up and I'm going to cover it up. And you can see right there. You can see where it was It was rubbing against the outer wall. And that's, uh, that's all it takes. It caused an oil leak. And then, then I had that oil leak. And she was smoking like crazy. So... That's all it took. So, now I just cover it up. And that's just to keep any dirt and debris from getting in there. While it's sitting around, uh, waiting for the rest of the work to get done at the shop.